This is Geometry Lesson 2.5, Unions and Intersections. So the big idea today says that given two figures, you can form their union by including all points in either of them or their intersection by including only those points in both of them. Now, sometimes the big idea can be a little wordy and we don't quite understand it. I think this one's really good. We're going to look at the definition here with some technical terms. I actually think the big idea gives the best kind of overview of what these are. So we're going to look at a union, which is when we have two figures. It's all of the points that are in either of them. And we're also going to look at the intersection. And that is only those points that are in both of them. So a union is everything from A and B. And an intersection are only the things that they share. Intersections only what they share. And the union is both sets together, combined. All right, so let's reiterate that right here. The union of two sets, we call them A and B. This is how it's written. And the intersection, I will show you, it looks like this. And so it's very easy to get these mixed up, but union, this looks like a U, and that's the easiest way to understand it or to remember it and memorize it, and the intersection is flipped upside down. So if you were just remember that union looks like the U and then the intersection is when it's flipped upside down, you can keep those straight. So the union is the set of elements that are either in A or in B or in both A and B. So I think that's where it gets a little wordy. And this is a better definition for remembering it. The union is all points in either of them, both sets combined, not just what they share, everything from A and everything from B. The intersection, on the other hand, that's what they share. It's written like this. It's the set of elements that are in both A and B. It has to be in both of them. I think this can be very, very well represented with a Venn diagram. So your intersection, that's the ones that are shared. It has to be in both of them. So you've got all of A and you've got all of B. The intersection is only represented by the things that they share. So the set that represents the intersection is just this overlap. This part of B doesn't overlap with A and this part of A doesn't overlap with B. So the intersection is just this. But the union, that's both complete sets. It's not just the overlap. So the union is all of A and all of B. So you can see if we consider this that A and B in both of these Venn diagrams represent the same thing, the set that represents the intersection is much smaller than the set that represents the union. That doesn't always have to be true depending on how this is set up. Okay, but the intersection is just what both of them have, what they share, and the union is all of A and all of B, including the things that are just in one and not the other. All right, we can look at these with lines and uh, some rays and see what they can combine as a union or as an intersection to be. So we've already actually looked at these intersecting lines before, and we said, oh, where do they intersect? What's the point of intersection? Well, if I have line M and line N, the intersection of them is point P, and that's what this is saying right here. If we're looking at the intersection, what do they share? It's not all of line M and all of line N. That would be the union. But the intersection is just what do they share? The only thing they share is point P. Now, if you look at this one, we have SR, the ray, and SQ, the ray, and they're connected. All right, and the union, so the intersection would just be point S. So if this was upside down, the answer would just be point S, like this was point P. But now it's the union. So what do we get when we include all of ray SQ and all of ray SR? Well, the combination of both of them, not just what they share, the combination of both the union creates angle QSR. It creates the entire angle. So again, if I change this, and flip this over, and I said, what's the intersection? What's the only thing that they share? That would just be point S. 
but because this said the union, it includes all of this and all of this. Those combined create an angle. So if you look at here, we have a triangle. That triangle, ABC, is the union of segment AB, segment BC, and segment CA. When we combine all of them, and that's what the union is, we count all of it, not just the overlap, not just the points of intersection. The combination of AB, BC, and CA all together give me triangle ABC. And then the last example here, this is what happens when there is no intersection. So the union of these two, remember that's everything inside of A and everything inside of B, would just be both of these figures, segment MN and ray FL. But the intersection has to be what they share, where they overlap. And this ray pictured here and this segment, they never cross, they don't share anything. So if I was asking what's the intersection of these, basically there's no answer. There is no intersection. And so there's a couple ways to say this. Sometimes we say the null set. It's a mathematical term, the null set. You may have heard that before in algebra. Or the empty set. And I think empty set makes more sense because it's empty. There is no answer. And so if I was trying to write this out mathematically and put my answer, I wasn't going to write it out in words as null set or empty set. The intersection of these doesn't exist. You can write it like this, where just like we had point P over here, and you can have more than one point if they if things are if more than one point is included. So you could have a list of points here. Like inside the brackets, you could have A and C and F. Okay, so it's not always just one in there. You could have a bunch. But in this case, it's just an empty set. It's your brackets and there's no numbers inside. Another way to write it is like this. So both of these are acceptable. So if I'm going to write that, you just put a zero with a line through it and that represents the null set. Either one of these are fine. If there's no intersection, there's no actual answer to represent that, it's the empty set or the null set and either one of those are fine. Okay, let's try some examples now. So we're given line MR, goes forever in both directions, with point N, which is between M and R. So looking at this, first of all, I always just check union or intersection, because it's really easy to get those mixed up. We're talking intersection. So what do they share? It's not all of this one and all of this one included. It's just what overlaps. What do they share? So MR is just from here, it's a ray forever this way. So just looking at MR compared to the original figure, it's everything from M to the right, but doesn't include everything to the left of M. And NM, the ray NM, starts at N and goes forever this way, because it's a ray, according to the notation there. So this one doesn't include everything to the right of N, but it does go to infinity to the left. So what is the intersection? What do these share? So from this point on to the right, our second one, NM, doesn't include any of that, so they don't share that. And from M to the left, okay, this ray, MR, doesn't include any of that. So what do they share? They share this piece in the middle. How do I write that? It has an endpoint and an endpoint. That's a segment. So ray MR and ray NM, they share this middle piece. They share from here to here. And so we would write that as segment MN. What about letter B? So start over if you're going to be drawing. Because be careful, we had NM here, and now they're talking about NR. That's a different ray. So NR starts here, N, and goes forever through R. And we're giving the union of M, N. So M, here's N. And the ray MN goes forever this way. Now remember, union is not just what they share. It's not just the overlap. So if we were just looking at the overlap, it would be everything from N 
to the right. This part wouldn't be included because it's not part of this figure. But we're looking at the union. So it's all of this included and all of this included. Now they share everything from N to the right. But MN has this little bit of extra. So this set includes the extra and it includes everything that they share. This again looks like this. All of A, even the part that doesn't cross B, and all of B, even if it doesn't cross there. Now all of NR is included in MN. R is over here. That's our original shape. Okay, so it's the part that's not include that's not shared and the part that is shared. So that would be represented from everything right here, not to the left of it, just from here and then forever to the right. That is part of the union of these two shapes. So how do we name that? That's a ray. We're not including everything to the left because both of these had an endpoint with the ray. So it starts at M and it goes forever to the right. So that would be ray M R if you wanted to call it that. And remember that rays can be named different ways. Either one of these would be acceptable. M through N forever and M through R forever. That's the same figure just named two different ways. All right, similar example. Let's try another one. We've got line DF going forever in both directions. And we've got point E that's between these two points. So what's the union of E, D, and E, F? So union is both of them put together. It's not just what they share. So ED goes from here to here, and EF goes from here to here. They do touch. There's no break in between them. So since we're just talking about all of this one and all of this one, you're combining them. A union is combining them. And they don't go forever because these do have endpoints. ED stops here, doesn't keep going. EF stops here, doesn't keep going. But when we share these, we've got ED right here, and we've got EF right here. So we're not just talking about where they cross and what they share. We're talking about all of them. That's the union. That's this entire segment. And so that is segment F, D. And you could call that segment D, F either way. The order that you name that doesn't matter. Okay, what about D, E, and D, F, the intersection? So intersection is only what they share. So we're talking about DE and DF. Intersection, only what they share. So they don't share this part out here. What they share is this section from D to E. And so that's your answer. DE, or you could name it the other way, E, D. But it's from here. To here, they don't share this intersection, is only what they share. Okay, to the back. The figure at the right shows this rectangle ABCD and it has some triangles on the inside. So, describe the following we're looking for the intersection, so only what they share, not the extra stuff, only what they share of the big rectangle ABCD and triangle E, C, D. So if we look, here's the triangle. We're looking for what does it share with the rectangle. So this part of the rectangle out here doesn't touch. So that's not included. Since we're looking for the intersection, the only thing that's included is this whole side, which you would write as segment DC. This part of the triangle, not included with the rectangle. This part of the triangle, not included with the rectangle. But point E is on the rectangle. So point E is also included. So it's the whole segment DC and also point E. Letter B, triangle BCE. Okay, so that's this little triangle on here. The intersection, so what does it share with ADE? So we're looking at this triangle, not the inside of it, but the outside of this triangle and the outside of this triangle. What do they share? Well, they only touch in one spot. They don't share any sides, they just share a point. And so the only thing that these share is point E. And the last one, we're looking at the union now, combining them, not just where they touch, 
all of AE, all of ED, all of DA. If that's all included in the set, what do we have? So we have AE, ED, and DA. If you look at that, those form a triangle. And if we're taking the union, not just where they cross, not just the intersection, the union, all of this one, all of this one, all of this one combined, we get triangle. You can name this different ways as well, ADE, or you could say, you could mix up the letters, AED or DAE. It doesn't matter the order that you put them. Okay, but when we combine those three segments, we get the figure, which is a triangle, A, D, E. Okay, so combining them, we include everything, intersection, it's just what they share. All right, now we're given two sets of points. Set G has these points, set H has these. What is the union of G and H? So the union is all of G and all of A, not just what they share. Union is all of them combined. So I'm going to list all the numbers that are included. And I'll put them in order from least to greatest. So the smallest number, it's, we're basically going to list all of these numbers and all of these numbers. If they share something, we don't have to list it more than once because we're just saying that it's included in this big set, the big union of G and H. So negative 8, negative 4, negative 2 is in both of them. We only have to write it once. Um, 6, 7, 9, and 10. So the union is all of this set plus all of this set combined. What about the intersection? So the intersection is only what they share. Negative 8 is only in H, so it's not part of the intersection. Negative 4 is only in G, not part of the intersection. Negative 2 is in both of them. So that is part of the intersection of G and H. What do they share? They share negative 2. They don't share 6. They do share 7, they do, do not share 9, and they do not share 10. So the intersection of G and H is just the two points that they share, two, negative 2 and 7. The union is all of the points in both of them combined. All right, and then the last question. Going back to integers, remember those are your whole numbers. So we're not talking fractions or decimals. We are including 0. We are including negatives, but just whole numbers. If A equals all your even integers and B is all your odd integers, find these two things. I'm going to move this down. A union B. That's all of your evens and all of your odds combined. So that's all of these numbers, right? Now, at first, I wanted to write all real numbers. We're kind of used to writing that for our answer when it includes everything. But all real numbers wouldn't pertain here because we're only looking at integers. We're not looking at fractions and decimals. So we can't say all real numbers. So it's the entire set, the set of integers, positive, negative, odds, evens. The union is all of these combined. All your evens, all your odds gives you the set of integers. But what about the intersection? What do these two share? All even integers, all odd integers. What numbers can I find in both of them? And the answer is none. If you're just looking at even integers over here and odd integers over here, those are different sets. They do not share anything in common. And so this would be your empty set or your null set.